more on uh, the Greece financial situation. French Finance Minister Christine Lagarde said today that Euro area countries have no reason to provide funds to help solve the country's crisis. Lagarde, in speaking with Sky Television, also said that Greece is beating expectations with its budget deficit cuts and is, quote, clearly delivering on its promises. All right, let's get more on Greece. For that, let's bring in Mark Dow. He's portfolio manager over at Faro Management. Mark says Greece is insolvent. That's pretty <laughs> straightforward. Talk to us a little bit more about uh, about your... Well, really, uh, if you have a debt problem, the, the, the most important variable in getting out from under your debt is your nominal GDP growth. Mm -hmm. And Greece, Greece's growth prospects look bad, not only because they have a high debt burden, but they're also in competitiveness, uncompetitive from, a, from an external standpoint. So it doesn't get any better? Well, no, it actually doesn't. And the, re the reason is when you have a fixed exchange rate and you're not competitive, the only way you regain competitiveness is through deflation. And if you're deflating you can't get out from under your, your debt burden because nominal GDP will be held down by that. So the growth prospects look bad. Inflation prospects look like they're facing more deflation than inflation. And it's, it's and really how can and Greece can't really control it, whether it inflates or deflates its, incur, its, its currency, right? Because it's dealing with. Mm -hmm. Uh, Brussels and, and Frankfurt. Exactly, exactly. So they really have no choice but to, I mean, you, you get to competitiveness through, a defl through deflation or massive productivity gains, which really aren't in the cards when you're cutting your fiscal budget, and usually you start by cutting investment. So what happens then? I mean, how does this play out in well, terms of This how is you where see I think it? a lot of market participants have been a little bit wrong-footed. They've been looking for a quick resolution. They thought it's either going to go one way or the other quite quickly. And this is going to be played out over the next few years. Uh, the, the, the EU has looked at this, as, and they're treating this as if it were a liquidity problem. And they're going to continue to provide them liquidity guarantees, whatever it takes to, so that they can roll over their debt to buy them time to do their adjustment. So kicking but, the can down the road. In a sense, but it may just be a, a misdiagnosis on their part. They may, and they're not necessarily pu pushing off the problems. They may think that they can so solve this by injecting liquidity, but they well, won't be able to do you, it. You say, you know, either way, if it's, if it's not handled well, it's bad for growth. How do you handle a situation like this well? I mean, what could they do to deal with it correctly? Well, there are two different. I mean, to, to my mind, the, the, the best thing would be, be to act forcefully uh, and ring fence Greece. And we're talking about the EU here, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. What they would have to do is they would have to get to the other countries that are, that are let's say, that look like Greece, the Spains and Italy's of, and, and Portugal's of the world, get to them, get them to, to develop budget plans that they're ready to roll out, come with an announcement that they're going to haircut Greek debt or, or do something to, to restructure the debt, reprofile it, not necessarily write down the nominal amount, but stretch out the repayment profile and drop the interest rate so, so Greek has, Greece has a lot more time to get out from under it, and at the same time, provide liquidity for the other countries so that, they, that you built a firewall around Greece and you don't get contagion. It would be painful in the short term and it would raise the cost of capital in, in, in Europe, but at least you're, you're, you're facing the issue and you can smooth out the adjustment path. Mark, for the what's countries. the likelihood of contagion, even if they're able to kind of contain Greece at this point? I mean, are there other countries that you're worried about? Well, there's very little, uh, very little chance in my mind that they're going to take the route that I just su suggested, right? So it, it will really depend on how orderly the process is. At some point, Greece will be, de will, will be deemed to have fallen off the wagon, so to speak, and they won't be able to take the pain of deflation and economic contraction. And the, and, and the early part of the adjustment process is, is, is relatively easy easy, right? There are a lot of things that they can cut. It will be in years two and three when they're asked to do more, the economy is shrinking, unemployment is, is growing, and they're still not competitive. And, and the EU comes and says, okay, do more, and they're going to say, we can't. That, that will be the that What will does be the, the point. EU do, though? Do they, do they absorb a certain amount of the debt for Greece? Or, I mean, how do, how do they give this haircut that, that you're... Because this is one aspect <laughs> of your plan that it seems like they have no choice. Yeah, I, I just don't think they're going to go that route. It's too pain. It's too painful up front. What, what typically happens in these in these situations is you you provide them with a series of liquidity programs. Maybe you bring in the IMF. Maybe you bring in the BIS for for an additional uh, credit line and. Hopefully they'll adjust. At some point, my my assertion is that at some point they'll realize that they just can't adjust enough, and they'll have to go to a plan B, which will be some kind of restructuring. Is there a bigger story that comes out of this? I ask this because our Eric Schatzker talked with uh, Joseph Stieglitz, and he said the euro area needs a new framework to assist countries when they suffer from crises such as Greece's current budget turmoil. Does that have to come out as well? Well, as it might. It, it, the question is, at this point, now you're, you're so far down this road with the imbalances that have built up, it's not clear that even a new framework, which presumably he means a, fi a centralized fiscal authority to mm -hmm. redistribute to help countries with their problems, uh, it's not clear that, that that could solve it. It may, be, it may be too late for that. Who's next? I mean, Carol asks the question, are there other countries that suffer the same kind of problems? We had a story in the Bloomberg earlier about people sort of girding for a huge drop in the pound as people realize the problems in the U.K. Is that the biggest concern among the, the really developed nations? No. Uh, it, it, uh, 
Greece looks more like Italy or Spain or Portugal than it does like the UK. But even those countries are, are different. Italy has a large debt burden, but the, the amortization, amortization profile is stretched out uh, dramatically, so the rollover risk isn't as high. Uh, the debt in Spain and Portugal is more in the private sector and less in the public sector. So again, it's similar but, but, but different. The UK has the great advantage of the degree of freedom of monetary policy, right? So if the pound depreciates significantly, that can help them get back to a competitive position mm -hmm. and offset some of the contraction and growth that they might you see. You expect to see that happen? We, we had a forecast well, that it would come down to a dollar twenty, which is the lowest we've seen it since it's 85. It's hard to say. It's already adjusted quite a, quite, quite a bit, but the pressure will, will be in that direction. All right. Hey, Mark, thanks so much for joining us. Sure. Mark Dow, Portfolio Manager at Faro Management.